You're listening to Nightlight. Hi there and a very warm welcome once again to Nightlight and with us on the program once again speaking to us from the USA is Melvin. We have a guest tonight on Nightlight. I want to talk a little bit uh, or share a little bit about what really hinders our faith. Wow, great. Now, in the New Testament compared to the Old, when we look at the two covenants that we are aware of, we have the old covenant which was actually given to uh, Abraham. God made a covenant with Abraham, but it was actually made to the seed which was Jesus Christ. Right. And then, of course, because the Jews, you know, they were getting into a lot of uh, uh, worshipping other gods and going after other things, God had to come down with the commandment. And yes. so the commandments kind of kept the Jewish nation under some kind of a control. Now, they had a kind of faith. That faith was just faith that there is a God and this God is mighty. He can do anything, anytime He wants. And if we follow Him, then we will be blessed. So that commandments that were given to the Jews, if you look at it, it was basically for the five sense based human being. The Ten Commandments itself, if you look over it, it's all based on the natural. Right. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not have strange gods. You know, these are all things that are pertaining to a, uh, to a person who's operating in the physical realm with a physical mentality and a carnal mindset. Faith, the, the true faith was not yet revealed to them. That's right. The Bible actually says the faith was hid. Wow. So the law was given to them, and so that covenant was more or less given to men that were not born again. And so all they had to do was keep the commandments out of their own willpower, and if they kept the commandments, then the blessings that God promised in Deuteronomy 28 came upon them. And now we have to understand, in order for their sins to be forgiven, they have to go and sacrifice this, you know, the lamb or the goat or whatever was needed every year. Yes. Now, the Bible says the blood of goats and lambs and bulls only covered their sin. It didn't take it away. It just covered it. Right. And so every year they had to do it. So it was all based on a physical access to the blessings by you keeping the commandment, you being obedient to God. But that was limited because God couldn't really bless them completely. God could only bless them according to the performance that they had performed. Right. So if you look, you know, in Deuteronomy 28, it gives you the list of blessings for obedience and the list of curses for uh, disobedience. The Jews did not have to have a lot of faith in the promises of God. They just had to have faith in the commandments. It's true. Like if they kept this, then they would do that, right? Just like we would tell our children, okay, if you did this and this, then daddy will take you for a movie or something like that. Right. In the Old Testament, the whole mentality or the class was that of a servant or that of someone received because of what they did. Right. So yes. the mentality was that of a servanthood or, you know, they were servants or they were people and God was God. Yes. There wasn't a, this relationship of father and son or right. father and children. See, that was in God's plan from the beginning. You know, Adam and Eve was created so that all the children that came out of Adam and Eve would be children of, of God and God would be their father. But because Satan came in and deceived Adam and Eve, and you know, the Bible says Adam and Eve obeyed the voice of Satan. And so whoever we obey, we become servants to them. So in the, in the Garden of Eden, there was, a, there was a shift from being in the image of God to now falling under a different image, and that was the image of Satan, or the nature of Satan. Now, a lot of times people don't understand the two covenants, and because of that, their faith gets hindered. When Jesus came, he fulfilled all the you know, requirements of the law. He was obedient even to, to death. And so when he did that, and when he died, 
we have a new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of Christians, they understand that we have yes. a new covenant in the blood of Christ, but this new covenant is totally different from the old covenant. It's not that the old covenant was patched up or reformed to make it new. The old covenant is done away with and the new covenant is now in the blood of Jesus Christ. That is what bought us the sonship. That's important to understand. So in John chapter 1 it says, you know, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, we won't find that in the Old Testament. There was no sonship in the Old Testament because Jesus had not bought this sonship through his blood. So we entered into a new covenant and the rules and the laws of the new covenant is totally different from the old because the old was given to natural men to keep them under control and at the same time God could only bless them according to what they did. But in the new covenant we enter into a covenant that is made between Jesus and God. In the Old Testament, God made a covenant with man, but man was not able to keep it. He was messing it up all the time. So now God made a covenant between Jesus and God, and we enter into that covenant when we believe in Jesus Christ. It's not a covenant between God and us. Wow. It's a covenant between Jesus and God. So that covenant cannot be broken by us. I'm just understanding that now for the first time. Because we never made it. That covenant is between Jesus and God, and that covenant will never be broken. Yes. Because Jesus fulfilled every requirement of righteousness that was expected of him. And so all we do is when we receive Christ, we are entering into that covenant. Yes. We are not under the old covenant. So now we, are not, we don't have a servant mentality. We have a son's mentality. Now, do we serve? Yes, we serve, right? Right. I mean, you serve God's children every day. You send out his word, you're serving. But yes. you're not a servant like in the Old Testament. You are a son who serves. I am a son who serves. Who do I serve? I serve people. I minister to them. I serve them, of course. You know, I'm, I'm serving God. But I'm here instead of Jesus. I'm taking the place of Jesus to do what Jesus wants me to do because Jesus is seated on the right hand of God. He can't serve the world except through us. Jesus said, we, you know, he's the wine, we are the branches. Where is the fruit being born? The fruit is in the branches. That's right. So we are the ones who bear the fruit, or we are the ones who are supposed to represent Christ on the earth. So in that sense, we do serve God, we serve people, but we are sons who serve, not servants of God, we are sons. Now see, that mentality is not coming to the Christians. A lot of Christians, they still operate with a mixed covenant of the old and the new. And so the new covenant doesn't really benefit them even though they're under the new covenant, they got saved because when you received Jesus Christ, you got saved and that cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. Your spirit is mm -hmm. recreated, you're changed. But your life on earth can be affected if you, if you mentally think that you still have to perform some of the duties of the Old Testament. Now, see, that is where a lot of us Christians, like I for years and years, even as a missionary, did not understand the two covenants, and because of that, my faith wavered a lot. Not my faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, not in my faith in the Father, but my faith to receive the blessings that God had already given to me. The faith to receive Jesus Christ is actually a direct gift from God, right? That's right. At the moment, when you believe the word and you receive Jesus into your heart, that faith was given to you instantly. And see, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, chapter 2, verse 8, and by grace are you saved through faith, and not that of yourself. Yes. It's a gift of God, not a work as any man should boast. See, that faith was a gift right there. You got it. 
But for you to live the rest of your God-given Christian life, you need to allow that faith that's inside of us to start manifesting in our daily life. Yes. But a lot of times Christians have understood that word faith means, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, that is true. You believe in Jesus Christ. But now you are in Christ. You are in a new covenant with God. Mm -hmm. So if you don't go according to the rules of the new covenant, mm -hmm. then you will not benefit from the blessings that God has already ordained for us to live in. Right. So yes. in the Old Testament, if people were disobedient, the curse came upon them. What was the curse? Sickness, disease, poverty, uh, depression, mental anguish, lack of peace, all of that was part of the curse. Mm -hmm. Now Christians still believe that if they, if they don't obey, then that curse will come upon them. And so a lot of the pastors, they teach that if you disobey, that's why you're sick. If you disobey, that's why you're, you, you're poor. You disobeyed. No, that's the old covenant. Yeah, in the new covenant, Jesus did the obedience for us. He fulfilled everything. He obeyed in every little thing. Because of that, there is a new covenant with God. And when we enter into that new covenant with Christ, God looks at us as obedient children. So, I'm not producing obedience to get blessed, like in the Old Testament. I want to obey as a son who wants to please his father. Amen. You see the difference? So, for many years, I had this old covenant mental uh, you know, understanding that, oh, if I didn't obey, God was going to strike me down. God is not going to bless me. And so, my faith did not work the way it works today for me, right? right? That's because, you know, my mind was not renewed to who I am in Christ. So if you entered, see, the word, you become a Christian, not because you just believe in God or believe in Christ. That's right. You are a Christian because you are in Christ. We come to Christ because we believed in Him. Because the Bible says, if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you believe that God raised Him from the dead then thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, right? And with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. See, that's the beginning of a belief. That's when we entered into Christ and into the new covenant. But now we are in Christ. That's what the Bible says. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. So now we're going to start walking by faith in every area of our life. But see, a lot of times... People think the faith that they believe that Jesus is the Son of God is it. And so they don't walk by faith. What they do is they walk by the five senses and they think that if I don't obey, God will not bless me. But that is not true. The light is always on with Night Light. Nightlight. You're tuned in to Night Light. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Yeah. See, God cannot bless us if he's waiting for us to obey. Then that scripture, is, that scripture would be wrong. You don't find that scripture in the Old Testament because Old Testament covenant was based on you obeying and God blessing. Right. You not obeying and God putting those curses on you or the curses coming upon you. Now, in the New Testament, God can freely declare that you are blessed with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. God can say that because of the obedience of Jesus Christ. Not because of your obedience. Now, is my obedience important? Yes. I am a son and I want to obey my father and do what he wants me to do. But I am not obeying for God to bless me. See, that is a key point for us to walk in faith. See, now every, everything changes. See, that, that's where Jesus came and he put us in him. That's why it says right there, in Christ Jesus. If you're not in Christ, then those blessings are not given to you yet. And we are talking about somebody who is not born again. Now, everybody who is born again has the same blessings. 
Nobody has more or less. But the reason they don't manifest in our daily life it is because we are believing wrong. We are mixing the old covenant with the new covenant and coming up with a mixture that the devil loves very much because that mixture doesn't produce any faith. Right. And that's why Jesus said you cannot, you know, attach a new piece of cloth to an old piece of cloth, right? Right. Or vice versa. See, there are two different things. Now, was the old covenant given by God? Yes. What Was the commandments given by God? Yes. But it was given to a different race of people. It was given to a human beings that were never recreated in the spirit. And so God couldn't say, I'm, I'm blessing you with all spiritual blessings. You cannot see that in the Old Testament. You can't. Because God can't say that because those people was under a different covenant. When we enter into the new covenant, we are entering into the obedience of Christ. God has all, uh, already said okay to Jesus because he obeyed till death. So we partake of his obedience. Now, when we fail sometimes or we sin sometimes, those blessings are not taken away from us. Those blessings are still there. It is just that you are not able to access them because you, you come under a sin consciousness and you keep thinking about your sin and thinking, oh, I, I, I blew it, I, I, I made a mistake. So if I pray, God is not going to answer my prayer. A lot of pastors are teaching that all the time. So people are under the bondage of the old covenant, even though they are set free by Jesus Christ to be in the new covenant. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, right? Right. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You don't see the scripture in the Old Testament because faith comes to us as a gift from God. Now, we are not just talking about faith that there is a God, there is Jesus, there is angels. No, we are talking about faith, something that is given to us, it's in a born-again spirit, and we have the same, same faith as Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. We have the same measure of God. The same faith that God has is given to us so that we can walk in it. Now, God is not going to expect his children to walk by faith if he has not provided faith. Yes. God is expecting us to walk in love. In, do you know in the Old Testament, God did not expect them to walk in love. Right. The law of love that Jesus spoke about, the two commandments, it's not in the Ten Commandments. So the Old Testament people, they just had a human love that they used their willpower to love people. Now that was available to the Hindus, to the Muslims, I mean they, there was no Muslims at that time, but today they have the same love that the Jews had under the law. Now God did not expect them to love their enemies. There's no scripture in that saying about the Jews that they should love their enemies, but if there was an eye for an eye, if they yes. plucked your eye, you can pluck their eye. But he, here comes Jesus with a new covenant and he's talking something totally different. He says, go and love your enemies. Do good to them that despisely use you. Pray for them. Now, this love humans cannot fulfill. And so the Bible says the Holy Spirit has shed the love of God in our hearts. See, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says, right? See, this shedding of the blood comes when you are in the new covenant under the blood of Jesus Christ. Under the blood of bulls and goats, there was no shedding of love. Yes. And so God gave his, his own love. That means the, the amount of love that God has, God is love, is inside of us now He's expecting us to use that love to be able to love our enemies. But see, Christians, what they're trying to do is they're trying to love people with their own love, which is, a, you know, a human love, and then they fall short. That is because they're not availing themselves or they're not digging or taking from that love that is shed abroad in our hearts. Yes. So God would not ask us to love our enemies if he did not give us a love that would love the enemies. See, that is one of the blessings that we just read in Ephesians. 
So God has put whatever we need in this life in the fullness so that, you know, if you need faith, you have faith. If you need love, you have the love. If you need peace that passeth all understanding, right? The love of God, the peace of God that passeth all understanding. The love of God. See, here you're talking about tapping into the real thing, not just something fake in the Old Testament. And so these things hinder our faith if we don't know what really happened with us in the New Covenant. Right. People are still claiming, oh, I claim the blood of Christ over my this, I claim the blood of... No, you are already washed in the blood of Christ. You moved from that stage to a stage where you are a son now with all the blessings deposited into your spirit. Then we say, why do we need faith? Now, faith is how God operates in the spiritual realm. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God because God is a faith God. He lives in the faith realm. That means where our natural five senses cannot comprehend. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Bible doesn't say without prayer, without worship, it's impossible to please God. That's right. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So God is looking for his children to walk in faith. Yes. So faith is a substance. That means it becomes a, it becomes a reality of the things you hoped for and evidence, which is the proof of things not seen. That's true. But a lot of times that is not happening in our life. What is happening in our life is we are begging God, we are praying, God, please do this, please do that. Could you please do this? That was exactly the old covenant mindset. In the new covenant, you are taking what God has already given us by faith. We, you know, the Bible in Hebrews also says by faith, right? If you read the same chapter, by faith, we know that the worlds were made by God. So God made everything by faith. He called things into existence that was not there in the natural. God called things to come to pass because he saw something and he knew something in the spirit world that he called into the physical existence. Yeah, that is what faith is. We know by faith God put everything in place. So when we come into the sonship of the Father, we are creatures of faith. We are children of faith. Yes. Now, if there is a faith, then if that is the most important thing, then Satan would want to strike at our faith. Because he knows if we don't have faith, then we have unbelief. Not unbelief that God is, doesn't exist, but unbelief that what God has promised will actually manifest. You see the difference? Right. A lot of times people think, I have faith in God. Yes, we do have faith, but that is the basics. That faith is not going to allow you to receive things on your own. So that is where Satan hinders. I feel all right when I'm listening to Nightlight. Nightlight. You're tuned in to Nightlight. Let's go to 1 Timothy 6.12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Yeah, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Paul is writing to Timothy, he already has eternal life. He's saved. But he's telling him, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. See, laying hold on eternal life is different from having eternal life. A lot of Christians do not lay hold on eternal life. They have eternal life, but they don't lay hold on it. Now, how do we lay hold on it? Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. When I come to Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, wherever I teach, in the churches, there is this big movement of spiritual warfare. You know, they, they have deliverers, they have warfare, they're going up on the mountain, fighting over the demons. And right. Our spiritual warfare is called fighting the good fight of faith. We are not, you know, going out there fighting. No, That's no, right. our fight is to stay in faith. That is a good fight of faith. Now, do we have authority over demons? Yes. We have authority. God has given us the authority. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Yes, we have that power. But the Bible doesn't say to fight the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, 
it's not fighting, it's resisting. You're saying in the name of Jesus, go, right? <laughs> and he will flee from you. But the fight the Bible is talking about is the good fight of faith. Yes. Now, that is how you lay hold on an eternal life. See, I have eternal life. If I die today, I go to heaven, right? That is called everlasting life. Do you know that everybody has eternal life? We're not talking about the eternal life that comes through Christ. We're talking about every human being, when they die, the spirits never die. Right. The spirits go, go to different places, right, according to God has ordained. Now, it is like they're waiting for the judgment, or some people go to hell. Some are waiting yeah, for the judgment after the millennium and the white throne judgment when God will, you know, restrict all of these guys out, and they're going to be judged according to their work. And, you know, they will live on the newly created heaven and earth, or they will go into the lake of fire. So, everybody has everlasting life. That's right. The spirits. But God is talking about, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. So, Paul is talking about this particular eternal life that is given to us. Yes, when we die, our spirits go to heaven. That has nothing to do with us. That is all God. Right. But to live on this earth, you have to take hold of the eternal life. Paul was not trying to talk to somebody uh, that was not saved and saying, hey, you need to get saved to have eternal life. No, he's talking to Timothy. He's been training him, right? <laughs> he's his yes. disciple. Yes. And he's telling him, look, you're, you need to take hold of eternal life because there's something in Timothy's life that this, this eternal life was not manifesting in certain areas, right? Yes. And so Paul was telling him, you need to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. That, of course, you know, profession, the word there is also confession. What are you confessing with your mouth before many witnesses, right? Right. Now, when you put out a video or a, a psalm or whatever is, you're professing a good profession before many witnesses. When I teach a class, that's what I'm doing. Right. But to take hold of the eternal life is a different thing from having eternal life. You might have a million dollars in your bank, but if you don't withdraw and use it, you're not benefiting from that million dollars. See, that is what's going on with a lot of Christians is that they settle with the fact that they have eternal life, they're going to heaven, and then they somehow try to live this life through hardships and through this and through, you know, depression and through mental anguish and sickness and this. They, they try to just drag through this life and they think, oh, if I praise God in my affliction and sickness and think God is pleased with me. Well, it's good to praise God in your affliction, but God doesn't want you to stay in the affliction. That means what glorifies God is not your sickness that you are enduring. What pleases God is your healing. What glorifies God is your healing. Yes. Now, I understand, you know, sometimes it might take a little longer. And of course, we are praising God and that is good. But God has already paid for a healing. So we need to take hold of that part of the eternal life and receive it and walk in it. That's right. And so it starts manifesting in our daily life. But a lot of times Christians have settled down to the fact that I love God, God loves me. If I sing some songs, if I tithe, if I praise Him enough, then uh, somehow maybe God will bless me. Now that is the old covenant mentality. It's a mentality of a servant. Right. A servant is waiting for wages. A servant does the job and is waiting for the master to pay him. A son doesn't need a payment. A son possesses everything that God possesses. Nightlight. You're listening to an international edition of Nightlight, shining God's love light to the world. Now let's look at uh, Romans uh, 8.17. Romans 8.17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Yes. So right here, the Bible says that if we are children, we are heirs. Not only heirs, but we are joint heirs with Christ. See, that is sonship. That is who we are. We are not waiting for a payment. 
for what we did. We are heirs. It belongs to us. Amen. See, when you know that you have money in the bank, you walk to the bank with confidence, don't we? We write a check or we withdraw because we have confidence that we have what we need inside of the bank and even more. See, confidence is nothing but faith to some extent. That's what the Bible says. Now, we have confidence, right, that whatsoever we pray, He heareth us. This is the confidence that we have in Him. See, that means this is a faith we have in Him. Because it's already there. Amen. I'm not asking God for anything that doesn't belong to me. Yes. I'm asking God for what He has already given me. See, faith cannot work outside of the provision of God. That means if God has not supplied it, you cannot have the faith to have it. Now, healing, the Bible says, by His stripes you are healed. Jesus Christ has made thee whole. You know, the Bible says, we are redeemed from the curse. The curse had all the sickness, disease, poverty, all of that. We are redeemed from the curse because God nailed the curse on the cross at Jesus. Jesus took the curse. It's done. It's over. A Christian is never under the curse. So the fruit of the curse is, should not be in our life. The only reason it is in our life is because we don't believe that we are redeemed from the curse. Everything in the New Testament is by faith. It's called the law of faith. In the New Testament, there is a faith law. So if you believe in that law, or if we go according to the law, faith starts operating and bringing into existence or bringing the substance, the things we hoped for. So if Satan can strike, see, if Satan cannot stop you from getting saved in the first place, the second thing he does, he's going to stop you from getting hold of the eternal life. That's right. So I'm not fighting demons and things. I'm fighting to stay in faith. Yes. Now, I want to give you a little example quickly. The other day I was driving, uh, you know, my principal invited me to come for, a, for some interview he was, he was doing for some teachers. He wanted me to sit on the panel with some other teachers. So I was driving there in the morning and I had just gotten my car brake cylinder fixed a couple of days ago and I was driving down, I had gone like 10 miles and my brake just got stuck. I couldn't put the brake and the car is still rolling. I cannot put the brake and then in a few minutes the car stopped moving and so I pulled it to the side and I stuck there and I prayed against it. I said in the name of Jesus, car you're gonna work, right? <laughs> now to my carnal mind that sounds stupid. If somebody heard me doing that they'll think I, I'm gone mad. Right. But I did it a couple of times and it didn't start so I called the towing company to come and pick up the car to take it to the mechanic. So I was sitting there in the car for like 30 minutes praying in tongues, so, you know, just thanking God, praying. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to do it one more time. So I got up and I said, in the name of Jesus, car, you're going to get fixed, you're going to work. And I turned on the car and my brake and everything started working. Wow. So I called the company that was com coming to tow. I said, look, don't come. It already started. I prayed and it worked. And I took it to the mechanic and the mechanic said, look, there's nothing wrong with the car. He, he doesn't know why it happened, right? Wow, it's a miracle. Now, what I'm trying to say is that we have entered into the new covenant and as a Christian, you can walk just like Jesus walked on the earth. Wow, yes. See, that's how you become joint ace with Christ. Everything that Jesus, that's why Jesus, before he left the earth, he said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. The word shall means he must. Wow. Or he can. Yes. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Praise he God. He wasn't talking to his disciples. He was talking to he that believeth on him. That means he that is entered into the new covenant. Yes. Now you have that same. Now whether we walk in it or not is a choice we have to make. That's right. So a lot of times we don't step out. We call it step out by faith. Faith means you don't see it, but you have the evidence, right? We don't step out. See, God in these last days is expecting his church to step out. Yes. Now, I'm not saying Christians don't step out. We do have moments where, you know, we, we walk by faith, but it's not a constant thing. And because it's not constant, we say, well, if God allows it, if God wants me to. No, God has already set it in motion. He said, you shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. It's not an option, right? Right. So God has already set it in motion. He has already given us everything that we need. Now he's wanting us to walk by faith. But we do have an enemy called Satan, and he's going to come to make us 
fall back into our carnal thinking or the thinking of the five senses. Yes. So we believe what the five senses tells us according to the worldly ways and not according to God's word, right? Right. Now, there was a famous preacher in the early 19th, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, you know, he said that I'm not moved by what I see or what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. Wow. Now, see, that is the walk of faith. Now, when we, when we are moved by what we see and what we feel, then fear, worry, anxieties, uh, all kinds of issues come up in our life. But see, God gave us this new covenant. He gave us this new creation, not just so your sins can be forgiven. That was not why Jesus went on the cross alone. He went down to hell and defeated Satan, rose again, so that we are walking in the new creation. Inspiring you to dig deeper into God's Word. You're listening to Nightlight. Okay, now 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah, so what happens is a lack of a failure to understand the new creation realities, right? That means who we are, uh, who we become. A failure to understand that can become a hindrance to our prayer life and also to, to faith. That's a very good verse because it says, all things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. And all these things, what are all these things? He's talking about the new things, right? The old things are gone, but the new things are of God. All these things are of God, and we are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, and He's given us to the ministry of reconciliation. So it's not that we are bringing someone to Christ. We are not just bringing someone to Christ. That's the cross. We bring people to the cross, but we don't let people just stay at the cross. We take them upon to be reconciled with God. So now we become a child of God. That person becomes a child of God. He's seated at the right hand of God wow. with Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times people who have been born again, even after 20 years, they're still clinging to the, you know, to the cross. That is how we come to Christ. That is what Jesus paid for. But if Jesus died on the cross, and if he was not resurrected on the third day, then you are not saved. And that's why in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, If you have confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He didn't say because he died on the cross. No, no, that was death. That was, you know, it was a triumph for the devil. The cross was a triumph for the devil. But when Jesus rose from the dead, that is when salvation was made available. We have to understand, we are not just bringing people to the cross and leaving them there. We bring them there and then we take them into the ministry where God has called us to reconcile them with God. That means reconcile means to look the same, right? You know, in the olden days when you reconciled your checkbook, that means it, it balanced with your account in your bank, right? Right. That was called reconciling a check. But now God has taken us and made us his child and blessed us with all spiritual blessings, made us a son and a joint heir with Christ. See, that's how you are reconciled. Yes. Otherwise, you are just an uh, old sinner saved by grace and still not able to, you know, walk in the fullness of Christ. And so the only way the carnal mind can understand that is that they think that, oh, when I go to heaven, everything will be okay. No, no, when you go to heaven, you don't have to fight the good fight of faith. When you go to heaven, you don't have to resist the, the devil. There is no devil in heaven. <laughs> That's right. Laying hold on eternal life is here. Now, that doesn't mean you're not saved. You can be saved and never experience eternal life on this earth because we never actively went after it. Right. See, we have to lay hold on it. He's talking to Timothy. Timothy was almost like a bishop then, right? 
and he's telling him you got to lay hold on eternal life where unto you are so called you are called to the eternal life it is already inside of you but now you need to step out practice it walk in it and you do that by the good fight of faith now i don't see any scripture in the new testament where a christian is running and the devil is chasing him but most christians are like oh you know what the devil has been chasing me and i have not stopped running no stop turn around and resist him and the bible mm. says he will flee from you that's right it doesn't say he will flee from god see on the earth you are representing god god has given us the power you resist the devil and the bible says he will flee yes but most christians they're running and the devil is chasing them and then they confess oh i was fighting a whole week of spiritual battle the devil was up no only fight we have is fight the good fight of faith yes the devil goes about as a roaring lion he's not a roaring lion good point as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour right whom resist steadfast or who stand who resist him said fast steadfast means continuously you're standing your ground amen and that's why the bible says give no place to the devil the place is a ground or a place you stand and that is the stand of faith right so you are you are standing and you are resisting him means you are saying hey in the name of jesus go see that is the all we have to do but the church has made satan so powerful has made sickness and disease so powerful made depression so powerful that there is no way of escape that you have to accept it see when you accept this depression as your own it becomes your own now you can't fight it you're not resisting it you're accepting it right but once you stand up and say no god has not given me a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind a sound mind a mind that is not depressed see when you claim that scripture and you stand in that faith no i have a sound mind i have heard of so many people who are depressed who came out of depression just by standing on the word of god the church teaches us that you got to do this massive fighting you got to be a warrior you got to be out there you know cutting the devil to pieces the devil is already defeated yes 2000 years ago jesus defeated him and struck him bare naked amen the bible says he made him an open show in front of the whole universe satan is defeated that's right for this purpose was the son of god manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil he did it amen and he seated seated means he finished his work now we are representing him on the earth and all we are doing is enforcing the victory that christ already has over the devil we are not fighting the devil what we are doing is we are enforcing and telling him look i belong to christ i am in christ i am a son of god and i'm here to enforce that victory that jesus gained over you see we are just law enforcement people right that's right <laughs> we are not fighting see but if the devil can get us to think that we have to fight every demon and every day we have no 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 we are overcomers more than overcomers overcomer is someone that you already won the fight see that's the difference between the new covenant and the old covenant now if you look in the old covenant the old covenant they did not do spiritual warfare in that sense because they did not fight the good fight of faith because they didn't have that all their war was physical against giants against other armies against other kings and kingdoms it was all physical because that's all they had but in the new testament we moved away from the physical fight and we moved to where we fight the good fight of faith now again faith is not of your five senses faith is a spiritual thing it is from your spirit yes the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of god so the word is what produces that renewal in our mind so now once you know that satan is defeated you are not afraid of him you know if you command in the name of jesus he will flee not only he anything that belongs to him flees john chapter 10 verse 10 the thief comes to kill to steal to kill and to destroy 
Now, that is what you have the authority to flee. You can make it flee. He's trying to steal from you. You don't have to let him do it. He can't destroy you. He can't. But as a roaring lion, he's walking around seeking whom he might devour. He can't just devour anybody. He's looking for the weak. Right. The one who thinks that God is not going to bless them because they're not obedient. Oh, God has not given me anything. I'm not blessed. That is weakness. People think that's humility. They think, oh, I'm being humble. No, that is pure weakness. Knowing what God has given us is strength. It's always bright when you're listening to Nightlight. Now, I have to learn this the hard way. You know, I'm teaching it today because I'm still learning, you know, more and more about it. I haven't arrived completely, but I understand what now walking by faith means. Now, I can't go by my, what my five senses are telling me because my five senses was programmed outside of the world. I was programmed by the world. I was programmed to fear. I was programmed to accept facts as truths. Right. But the Word of God is the truth. So if God's Word says that I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings, I need to believe that. Yes. Not what my circumstances are dictating to me. So the more I believe what God's Word says, sooner or later my mind is renewed and I have the substance of the things I hoped for. Substance, it becomes real, it becomes materialistic, it becomes into the natural world. It remains a title deed but it becomes a substance when my faith brings the realities of the spirit world into my physical dimension. That is when it becomes a substance. Otherwise, it remains a title. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I might have a title of a car, but the car might be in Houston, in another city where I'm not using it. I'm not benefiting from it, but I do have a title. But the substance is not just having the title, but you are actually having the material possession of that under your control. Faith is not, you know, it's not just a currency uh, in the sense that if I, if I have so much faith, I can get so much from God. No, we have all the faith that God has given us, but to turn that faith into substance, that means it has to manifest in our daily life, in, in a physical manifestation. Otherwise, you know, faith is still there. So once it manifests in the physical realm, you don't need faith for that. Maybe you might need it in the future, but now you need faith for something else that has not manifested. Now a good uh, example would be healing, you know, because one of the greatest, what you call needs of the world, especially the Christian world also, is healing and finances, right? Because that is what people are trying to have faith for. But you got to understand, both of them is already given to us, right? Right. Uh, because our, our carnal mind is so programmed to a physical need being met by a physical world, that's how we are programmed ourselves. So that's all we are getting. But if we start meditating, you know, on God's word, on, on finances or healing, and believe what God's word says, not because somebody, some pastor taught this or some pastor did that, or no, no, you have to go back to the word of God and say, what does God's word say on this subject? And then renew a mind to it. And when you meditate on it, now when the physical circumstances look shaky, you will still stand and you will fight the good fight of faith. And you will lay hold on eternal life. It's a process. And because of the misunderstanding that eternal life means uh, going to heaven. It's not just that. It is part of it. But Jesus said, what is eternal life? but to know the Father. Yes. So knowing the mm -hmm. Father is eternal life. See, Praise God. as a child, when you're born into the world, you don't really know your Father. See, mm -hmm. your interaction with, uh, with the Father is what produces a relationship in the, in, the, in the physical world. In the same way, when you're born into the family of God, you don't know God yet. We learn to know God through His Word and by walking, by faith. That's how we get to know God. And every step of faith we take, God blesses it because He's pleased with it, right? Uh, see, that is how the New Testament Christian operates. That is the law of faith. That's the law of love. It is a completely different covenant from the old. So, I'm not trying to fulfill the old covenant because it wasn't given to me. I already fulfilled it because I'm in the new covenant. Jesus fulfilled it for me. And as I walk 
in faith, as I'm walking with the nature of God, it is automatically fulfilled in me. Mm. When I'm walking in love, that commandment is fulfilled. So I'm not trying to fulfill the Old Testament or try to walk like how uh, Jeremiah walked or you know Elijah walked or David walked. They all walked mm. under a five sense based covenant. Yes. So all that to say is that if we can understand the new covenant, then one of the hindrances to our faith is can be eliminated once we know who we are in Christ, we are new creatures, and all things are of God, and we are in the business of reconciling men to God, right? Not just bringing them to Christ, but from there taking them and feeding them the words of reconciliation where they can understand who they are in Christ. Inspiring you to draw closer to God. You're listening to Nightlight. Melvin, when you're talking about spiritual warfare and the devil is already defeated, I understand that. But at the same time in the world right now, the devil and his people are on a rampage. And surely we still need to fight in prayer against evil and evil people and that the Lord will intercede and protect his children from these awful things that are happening in the world. You're not saying that we shouldn't fight against these things in prayer, right? See, these things, like, you know, just like God needs his children to walk in manifestation of his power on the earth. See, when Jesus walked on the earth, he did not fight with the devil. He commanded the devil to leave. You know, there was nothing like he was fighting day and oh, I'm struggling to overcome the devil. No, there was nothing like that. The devils knew him. And they respected him. They knew his authority. So when he spoke, they left. There was no in-between. There was no in, you know, there's nothing like, no, I'm going to hang around. No, they left. That is the same thing we have. That is what we do. That is warfare. When we talk about spiritual warfare, it, you know, there's a misunderstanding that, you know, that the devil is somehow stronger and we have to pray and pray and pray and God will remove that. No, God has given us the authority and the power. So we have to command. We have to uh, speak up against the devil. Now, there is not one scripture, if you read from Acts onwards, where somebody is asking God to get rid of Satan in somebody's life. There's not one scripture. But there's so many scriptures where God's children are commanding the devil to leave. See, that is our offer. We are not asking God get rid of the devil. There is not one scripture, but there are on four or five scriptures that says, he will flee from you. Resist the devil. He will flee from you, not from God. We pray in faith, not in prayer of hope. See, a prayer of hope was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we, have, we do prayer of faith. We pray by the faith. It means we know God has already done this. See, and that's how you pray. See, you pray in the name of Jesus, I command the sickness to leave my body because that sickness has no right to be in my body because Jesus already paid for it. See, now that is yeah. called the prayer of faith. It's not a prayer of hope. We are hoping God will get rid of it. That's right. What you're saying is true. We're not going to sit behind and just let evil men take over. But the way we do it is by faith, knowing that if we speak, then evil will go. So just like God uses his children, the devil uses his children too. All this fear is spread by people. Media is spreading it. People that say they're, they're speaking sickness and disease more than they're seeking faith of God. So in the world, there is more unbelief. The Bible says the whole world lies in darkness. What is darkness is nothing but unbelief. Power of Satan works in unbelief. So the whole world is moved by unbelief and not by faith. Very few Christians are actually exercising the authority that is given to them. They are, they are begging God to do something. No, God doesn't need you to beg. God needs you to command. That is faith. When you command a situation in the name of Jesus, of course, in the beginning stages, it will not go away, but you keep at it, and sooner or later, you see it goes, because it has mm -hmm. to flee. A lot of times people say, in the name of Jesus, we heal. If it doesn't happen, they say it didn't work. See, the minute you said it didn't work, you just went against faith. You do what God told us to do. He said, resist the devil. That's our part. 
he will flee that is god's part yes see when you resist him the devil knows you understand your rights and your authority so he will flee we do we do need to do something it's not that we sit and let the evil take over but we want to walk as manifested sons of god so you can do that any time you want i'll stop there and we can continue some other time And yes, that's all we do have time for on this show, but Melton will be back with a lot more to share on these very key topics that can seriously upgrade our spiritual lives and walk with the Lord. This is Chris Glynn signing out, and I'll be back soon with another Nightlight podcast. Until then, may God bless and keep you all. Bye for now.